My name is Pat Patrick Gartland, uh, CTO of Cloud Checker. Just came to do a quick intro. Uh, DevOps on Windows, how to deploy complex workloads. Uh, what we are, so, Cloud Checker. Has anyone uh, familiar with it? Anyone used it? Awesome. Uh, so cloud management tools, uh, cost reporting, security reporting, if you have your tags, complex workloads, multiple accounts, aggregating all of that data together. Uh, so please check us out. You can take a short, uh, our free trial, take a short intro, load some stuff up, see what value we provide. Uh, if you see me around, I'm more than happy to talk to you about whatever workloads you want to monitor, any issues that you are, uh, any issues that you are seeing that you need help with uh, monitoring, managing, especially around tagging, make sure that you have the visibility and insight into everything that you have deployed on AWS or anywhere. So thank you very much. Thanks. Hello and good afternoon. Um, you already know this session uh, on DevOps on Windows. Let me get, you can see the slide. Okay. So um, today we're going to talk about how DevOps can play a role in bringing the magic of the magic in the software. Um, and I am Akhtar Hussain. I am a solutions architect um, based off of New York. Uh, I work on the uh, healthcare and life science uh, team. Um, so, in the from, from the, the expectation from the session, um, how we can leverage the DevOps uh, in making the magic of software come true. Um, we'll also walk through some DevOps uh, tools in AWS. Uh, we'll focus on uh, on on Windows how these tools work with Windows. And then we'll go a little bit deeper into some of the uh, specifics of a CI CD pipeline uh, on Windows uh, using a, a, a .NET uh, uh, on AWS. Um, for questions, um, because of the time, uh, if we can hold the questions uh, to the end, uh, and then, then we, can, uh, uh, we can answer, or I can do it outside, whichever makes it comfortable. Uh, how many of you are uh, using DevOps uh, in your groups or organizations, uh, are familiar with the tools? Um, so quite a few are. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll make this, uh, you know, as we, as we grow, as, as we move forward, we'll, we'll get more involved into the later tools that we have. So why invest in DevOps? Um, uh, so why, why do you want to do, use DevOps? If you are uh, on premises and you have been using DevOps or uh, do not know how, how much you have used DevOps, but on the cloud to be successful, uh, DevOps is pretty, 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 pretty significant and important for you to do. For example, startups uh, uh, can now take up giants, um, big companies uh, with little or no funding. And, and the way they can do that is getting your software into the hands of the end users as quickly as possible. The, uh, uh, the feature sets, the, the application um, enhancements or removing the bugs and all that. Your ability to move fast uh, is very important. How you can move, how you can keep your competitors uh, and, your, uh, any, and any kind of disruptions that are coming uh, away so you can uh, iterate your, on your software, on your application and features, and keep on building on it. Another thing that is important um, that you can leverage DevOps with for is, uh, are you, are you, do you find out your own uh, errors or mistakes or bugs in your software before your customer finds out? What can you do uh, to do those? Um, so the, the days are gone when giants like Microsoft, Oracle, uh, IBM would write their software for years, put it in a CD, burn it in a CD, shrink wrap it, truck load it, go to the retailer, and deliver it there. And then you going it, picking up the software, unwrapping it, installing it, configuring it, and hoping that it will work. The next version will probably come two, three years later. And the cycle goes on. Uh, in a new software delivery model, uh, you have the ability to deliver uh, with a single click and a download. And you do it on your iPhone or your uh, Fitbits or, or in, in your car or any of these devices or Echo. Uh, so 
So where do, where do you start uh, to, to, to participate in this, uh, this magic of software and how to deliver your, your features and, and services into, into your applications and keep, keep your competitions away from you? So uh, one is, do you, do, you do you have a release process which is automated? How many of you are working with organizations that have release processes that are completely automated? Great, That's, at least I have a couple of hands, you know. Uh, yes, it, 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 is a, it is a cycle of maturation. I mean, I'm not going to say you will, you will achieve that um, uh, at first go or over time. You, that's, that's your objective, that's your goal that you want to get there. And not only just the release of the software, but in, in the testing and automated automation. So do you, do you, after the build, do you have scripts that will do the unit test, uh, do the integration testing? Uh, and then, once it is in the production, do you do continuous production testing? Uh, so do you do, you do some kind of a synthetic uh, traffic uh, to your production testing and monitoring uh, the, the response from your production testing? And know beforehand, your customer knows that there is an issue or a problem or a bug. Good? So uh, this, this is an area where, where you, you have not heard of or, or haven't, or not many people are doing this. Uh, so your, 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 your services or your application may stop working and, and a certain piece of the feature set may be stopped working and you may not be aware of. And what are you doing uh, to, to make this uh, available, unavailable with your team knowing about it so you can react on it? Yeah, so you can have a monitoring and this, the, this, this testing of your in production uh, will help you uh, to continuously uh, find out issues or problems with that. How many of you are involved in production testing, actually production, doing production testing? I think I saw one hand with completely automated uh, release, uh, but are you, so, uh, so, so we, we, we need to test all, all the business critical functionalities, not just the API set, the UI set, all the services as a whole as a function, as a, as a, as a software as a whole. Um, uh, test, run, uh, test must run quickly. Uh, of course, if you have unit tests or even production testing, it has to run very quickly because you do not want the, the main uh, app or the, the load uh, needs to be taken away from there. Uh, measure your client latencies, not just the functionality of the application, but your response time uh, to your customers from different locations, right? For different regions, different locations. Uh, then check for reachability. Can, can certain, from certain points, or, or if it is a global app or something that you have globally distributed, can the customers, uh, your end customers or end users can access that? Uh, so what are the, some of the techniques that you can apply? Um, continuous, continuous production testing, I mentioned that. So, and you can automate that. The, manage the deployment health. So monitoring, constant monitoring of your performance, and, and we'll talk about tools that will allow you to do that. Uh, then deployment with, uh, as a segment, you know, either uh, you do a deployment uh, one, uh, or one at a time, or two at a time, or a, on a region, or on a, on a particular environment, and you wait uh, until uh, you have response from all of your testing, that everything is a good go, then you go to the next uh, deployment. So even, even those, in each of those deployments, you can do segmented or uh, portions of it. Uh, and depending on issues, problems that, you, that you're monitoring and your own testing have, have you can stop the uh, further promotions of, of, of a certain version or a certain code. Um, gates for approval. Um, it could be human approval, human uh, involvement, or it could be completely uh, test automated uh, environment for gates. So, so you may hold off for a certain period of testing before uh, it goes to the next piece. Uh, some of the prerequisites for success. Version. Uh, I, I think version uh, minimum on your, on your dev, you will do the version control, right? Uh, then automated build. Uh, maybe. Uh, most, most of it will, will do some kind of a unit testing, uh, not on a, on a developer environment, but on, a, on your build process, uh, in, a, in a build process, whether you're doing the unit testing or not. And then the automated deployments. And you do the automated deployments, uh, one instance or 
or this or a group of instances, um, and do and then do an, uh, unit testing and then do the integration testing. Integration testing meaning involving other pieces of the software, right? Other other parts of the services that you are or that you are leveraging in your application that you will test along with that, and then continuous delivery and how that can be deployed in a continuous manner. So if you take these uh, and and you can at least take uh, phase-wise implementation for your, in your DevOps process, uh, you will find uh, that you are being able to deploy the delivery set and with, with a lot of confidence. Uh, so you can remove the human parts of it slowly away. Yeah, so with a, with a lot of confidence you will be able to do because you have built in uh, the, the gates to stop, uh, the gates for testing and all that. Um, operational dashboard, so add to that the operational dashboard. Uh, and all of this you can summarize. Uh, you have the source code or source build, somebody submits the code, and then you build to do the build and deploy it uh, to an integration stack, do some integration testing, and deploy in production. The build itself includes the unit test. So what tools uh, do, you, do you need uh, to move fast? Uh, uh, releasing software in this new software-driven world requires a number of tools, right? Tools to manage flow of the software development uh, in the release process. Tools to properly test and inspect your code yeah, for defects and potential issues. You could be automated in an automated manner. You can look at the style of the code uh, or certain uh, artifacts or, or constructs that has been used in that code set, right? If you have decision process or a, or a while loops or all of those you could detect, or you can automate that up to that level. Uh, you can look at the style and all of that. You can automate that process. Uh, then tools to deploy your applications, and today we'll talk about the AWS tools. Uh, but any, any story on DevOps is not complete if, you, if I don't tell you this story on how AWS or Amazon builds this software. Uh, we, microservices, and you probably have heard of the two, uh, two pizza team, so two or three people forming a team, delivering, uh, starting from a uh, requirements gathering, uh, then developing it, uh, using the testing it, testing it, and then continuous delivery to that. And, and then following up with uh, issues, problems, support, uh, and maintenance. So when across uh, Amazon, there are thousands of these teams who are building services or features of a service or an application, and then building, mac on mic building microservices, and then practicing continuous delivery, and how many, how many times uh, in your organization do you, uh, do you deliver a version of your software or do you do a build or version of a software? How many times you do that? In a year, how many times, would you say? Uh, if you go back, to uh, maybe even five years or six years back or 10 years back, you will see that versions of software that, being re that was released by these big giants were in three years, two years, this way. Uh, but in, in, the, in, in 2014 alone, Amazon Web Services or Amazon as a whole, uh, these two pizza teams delivered 15 million deploys. And you are not waiting, so, so if you look at it, it's almost like two minutes there is a deploy happening. So every two minutes, so the pace of our uh, uh, innovations uh, is, has to be backed up by the tools that will allow that to happen. Um, so uh, one of the things we, uh, the Amazon uses was the pipeline, uh, how I can automate actions and, trans and transitions from one actions, a set of actions or stages that I can, I can move things that, and, and, in, and in between test as they move along. So faster, safer, um, consistent and standardized. And also on top of that, you can visualize uh, where, where, where things are moving, how things are moving. So for your team, for that specific team, normally you will use a preset of tools uh, and the, the dev team or the, or, or the team that is developing the service uh, is provided with this kind of set of tools and they use within those tools uh, the platform, dev platform, the tools, uh, DevOps tools and all that within that, they will use that to achieve the success. They will not build their own uh, tools, uh, they will do that so because the focus is 
building the service and not the tools. Um, so, as I was saying, there was a, these are the processes, the four major processes. So the source, uh, you develop somehow in some IDE or some place. You, uh, you have some kind of a checker, and then you, uh, you, you submit the code. And when you submit the code, uh, there is, uh, it could be a Java code or some peer review or, or whatever the process you may have. Right? Uh, and then they compile. So it now it is automating it, pulling the, pulling the change from your source code control, TFS or whatever it is. Then you do the build. And after the build, you have some scripts that does the unit testing. This get some code metrics out from there, uh, meaning what are the, um, it could be the style, structure, uh, decisions, number of decisions that you have made, or all of those kinds of things that you can capture. Of course, uh, it has to be in some context with that. Or it could be uh, uh, a, a container image that you may have. At the end of the build process could be a container image, right? Not, not just an, maybe an MSI or an EXE, uh, but it could be a container image. Um, integration testing, so once you take this code, and you have done the unit testing, then it goes to the next stage to integration testing in a limited area, and then you run your integration testing with other services around that. So UI testing, penetration testing, maybe even performance testing. Um, finally, uh, you take it to the development environment. And uh, you can do a segmented development environment. You can do a blue-green environment. Are you familiar with the blue-green environment? Uh, so you may have uh, uh, an, an environment in which you deploy. Uh, in, in production, the other environment you deploy you, you do the, your testing and everything is successful, and then you switch over to this. And this is ready up for the next deployment that is coming up. So, um, so if I take those phases, if you, if you were to uh, make DevOps a, 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 a one of the factors that would make you successful in the cloud environment, uh, you could take it in phases. You could take just the source process, the committing and versioning of the source process, and then you take the build process. If you can automate that, that would be, uh, you have made a one big uh, step taken forward, right? Uh, and then you can take uh, continuous delivery, meaning then you can include the testing, but then the testing is blocked after the testing is done, before it goes to production, maybe some gates you put in, uh, some kind of inspection, some human interaction, or some, some kind of uh, interaction that you bring in before you let go to the production. And then finally, uh, when you have matured further and you have built your confidence, uh, then you can take it to the next level and then make the whole thing a, a continuous, uh, uh, continuous uh, uh, deployment from a, a, somebody, a, 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 a user or a developer submits a code into the source control, whichever that control is, and then the, your, your DevOps continuous delivery system detects that there is a change in the code and pulls that code, does the build, applies the unit testing to it, all those that you have figured, applied, and then do the process of testing and deployment. Let's look at the uh, Windows tools that we provide. Uh, I think just recently, uh, uh, AWS and, uh, has released a, in the preview the Visual Studio 2017 uh, toolkit. Uh, have you used the Visual Studio Toolkit uh, on AWS? Okay. So we just recently uh, released a, a preview version because 2017, Visual Studio 2017 is also in, in, a, re, in a preview version, I think, at this time. So we'll probably be working on it. So with that comes our SDK. Uh, all the, our API sets, uh, all in, interacting with AWS for all those services and everything, uh, we expose APIs and these SDK help to interact with this API uh, much, much uh, simpler, much easier for you for any of the in environments. So, and then we also provide, with this toolkit, we also provide a large number of pre-built uh, PowerShell scripts. And, and we will look at some of them uh, in just a minute. So, how many are you familiar with uh, PowerShell scripts uh, are you using in your, so, yeah. So we, we provide a lot of, lot of these PowerShell scripts. So you don't have to write uh, uh, in, 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 for an AWS environment. 
for many of these PowerShell scripts, you will probably find uh, that we provide in either uh, in this toolkit, uh, or in, in this uh, toolkit, or or we have some other qu quick starts and other 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 kits that uh, other uh, uh, prepackage uh, things that we make. Then you can leverage that. We'll we'll talk about some of that on a higher level. Uh, as we have matured further, uh, then on a higher level, then you can use some of our uh, code star uh, services like the code deploy, code commit, uh, code pipeline, and, uh, and and all of this. And then there is another tool called the OpsWorks. So sometimes you can wonder which one should I use, and uh, actually you, you you decide on what how familiar are you with certain certain things. If you are set familiar with uh, you, the developers are familiar with um, Chef and Chef recipes, uh, you could use DevOps. Very easily, or if you have uh, Jenkins uh, or, or Ansible, you can probably use the code pipeline. So, uh, wh whatever makes you comfortable, whatever makes it easier for you, you adopt that as part of your team. Um, then we have Elastic Beanstalk um, that integrates with your uh, with your Visual Studio IDE. You can deploy, you can create your application, build your application, do your unit testing, and then deploy into AWS. You can deploy the environment, the infrastructure on which this application will go, and the, the, the application itself. And you have a choice of whether you can version the application or you can version the environment. Uh, so you have the ability to, 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 to control that. Normally, you would use Beanstalk uh, for maybe two-tier two, two, uh, two architecture or, or, you know, or maybe a, more, a little bit more simpler applications, right? Uh, and then you have our RDS, um, the, our relational database as a service, uh, the MySQL server, or, or I'm sorry, SQL server, Microsoft SQL server. And then for uh, remote execution of maybe PowerShell scripts, you could use the, our EC2 simple uh, system manager. Um, in addition to these tools, we also deliver things like called the AWS Quick Starts. So, for many of the uh, workloads, for many of the um, pieces of the applications or services that, that you would like to deploy as part of your overall service, you could use uh, some of these quick sites, the prepackaged, uh, ready to go application that has uh, taken into consideration the reference architecture. So we, we provide lots of reference architecture, and some of these reference architecture we then convert into quick start. So basically, you can launch these uh, within. So everything is automated, everything is pre-built, scripts are provided, and you can launch these and get started very quickly. Examples of um, Active Directory domain services. You can have Active Directory deployed, or you can have a uh, federated security with Active Directory um, whole configuration deployed, and you should be able to test that. The good part is that it, it is part of our reference architecture, so you can see the best practices, and then you can take these and uh, customize it to fit with your needs. Uh, SQL Server, SharePoint, Exchange, um, Remote Desktop, CI/CD uh, for Windows. So very recently we have uh, released a CI/CD for Windows. So the whole infrastructure of your build process uh, you can leverage uh, by using uh, this uh, Quick Start Kit. Um, here is a, a summary of some of the tools that I just talked about. Uh, CloudFormation. How many of you know CloudFormation? Probably the most easiest tool, which is a JSON YAML based tool uh, that you describe uh, or code, uh, you describe uh, the whole infrastructure, uh, uh, whole infrastructure, and, and be able to automate that, the whole build process. Uh, the great part of it is it is atomic in nature, so you can, uh, it will build the whole thing or, or, or it will not build anything. It will roll back if there is an issue or problem. Talked about AppsWorks. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about OpsWorks and a little bit more. I'm not going to talk about X-Ray. Uh, this is a service that can be used after your, after your application is running, how you can uh, do uh, performance uh, bottlenecks, um, issues, problems you can detect using X-rays. Uh, essentially, it puts some traces uh, and, and creates the logs for it for you to be able to uh, aggregate. The tool will aggregate these logs and be able to show you uh, the bottlenecks and issues and problems before anyone else finds out. Uh, the bottom row is, the, is the, the code star services that I was talking to you about. 
the code pipeline, code commit, uh, code build, uh, and AWS deploy. So let's look at the uh, very simple uh, examples uh, of. So let's let's see how I can uh, how I can show you something on uh, Opsworks. So what I will do is uh, I have a Opsworks stack. So Opsworks starts with a stack uh, called IS Walkthrough. It's basically a simple uh, application. Let me see if I have a slide that will show uh, the application. Yeah, so it's a pretty st uh, straightforward application. Uh, uh, has, a, has a load balancer and some uh, Windows IIS server. Okay, let's see how. Uh, so it uses Chef Recipes, um, and, and I'll show you some of, if you're familiar with Chef Recipes, this would be one of the things that you may want to use. So I have a stack defined for IIS walkthroughs, uh, and then I have layers. And in the layers, I have an ELB or load balancer. And then below that, uh, I have some web servers, right? Um, so for REST servers, uh, I, have, I, do, I did not put any instances in it. So let me add some instances, or I can go in here. So I have an app here that, that is ready to be deployed. And this app, I have put it in an S3, or our, our simple storage uh, service where you can store um, any, any kind of files in there. So I put some code in S3. I could have put, put it in uh, uh, GitHub and pulled from there, but I just put it there. And then, um, and then uh, look at the instances. So I'm going to add some instances. Uh, I'll just take the um, uh, sense name as that. So, oops. So let me take a smallest one, uh, and I'll take the subnet. Okay. And I'll launch another one. And I'll take the next. You're familiar with our zones, and oh. so in this region, I'm using in the West region, uh, and we have availability zones or data centers or clusters of data centers. And in each of these data centers, I have put uh, two instances uh, that for high availability purposes, and I put a, a load balancer on the top, which which can handle uh, instances across uh, availability zones and to be fault tolerant, to be highly available and all that. So while, while, we, while we get this, uh, get to start, uh, let, let us start, uh, what will happen is, uh, and I'll, let me show you the recipes or the, uh, how many of you are familiar with Chef? Okay. So basically, uh, it's, it's a tool that tells, uh, it, you, you describe what you want it to do. Uh, when you detect a change, what do you want it to do? Uh, or when a new instance comes up, what do you want to do? And, and the describe is in a, in a format that uh, is, a, is a, let me bring that up. So I have a, I have a, recipe, uh, I have a cookbook called the IAS cookbook, and in there I have some recipes. And I have a deploy recipe, uh, and I have a uh, install recipe. So when a new application comes up, can you see it? Uh, so when a new application comes up, it, it, you, you see it is running a PowerShell script uh, to install, uh, uh, to add, uh, add, add Windows features, uh, web server. And then b b if it is not already installed on that instance. And then, uh, in the next piece, in the next section, is doing a start and enable that feature uh, in, in the Windows. Uh, the, the deploy piece is, is looking for where the application uh, code is. So some environment variables in the application I have defined uh, that use, by that, using that, combining that, I can get to the path where the, the source code is for that application and then tells you where the, dark, where the object is going to be on the target object. So you can see in the, in the INET pub, uh, www root, uh, I pulled the default HTM. So it's just a simple uh, app, app trying to show you that uh, I can take this and put it in there, and it will start to uh, use that. So 
uh, once it comes up, then we will uh, is is booting. So n normally, uh, when you when you are, when, if the IIS is not installed um, to activate that as a service, it, it takes a little bit time. If you are familiar with Windows uh, and, and and having to put that in, and so it is booting up uh, at this point. So we'll go back to that. So let's go to the uh, slide deck a little bit. So we'll get back to it and, and look at it. Um, so introducing the, the next piece, uh, the next uh, set of software called the, the AWS code. Um, so these are the services that I have said. So, and the, the pipeline uh, envelopes the, all the steps, including in there. So, um, so we have the code commit, uh, code build, so the code build will build the, uh, if you have the environment set up or the right environment on that code build and, and the source code is pulled into that uh, and then you can build the thing and then it will deliver the, 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 the result of the build. Could be an MSI, could be, could be an EXE, or could be um, uh, a, an image uh, for, a, for, a, for a container. And then you finally do the deploy. Um, in, so, so Code Pipeline is a tool that will do a delivery of service for fast and reliable um, application updates, model and visualize your software uh, release process, build, test. You can attach uh, into the pipeline uh, in these different stages, uh, which we'll walk through a little bit, uh, diff any kind of tools or any tools that you have or you can use the tools that you're currently using and you can plug it into that. Um, so here is a release process model in AWS code pipeline. So I have a source, a build, a deploy to integration, integration test, and deploy to production. And so this is a pipeline. Uh, so the pipeline has stages. I can have a source stage, a build stage, an integration or test stage, and the production I could have a staging uh, stage, uh, then QA stage, and a production stage. All of this could be automated and visualized. Within the stage, I can have actions, what I want to do. Uh, uh, and you can use some of the uh, other code services to, to, to implement those actions, or you can have your own actions custom built. Um, then between the stages is the transition. Uh, uh, what flows from one stage to the other. The, the, in, the output of the, of the stage previous to that flows into the input, as an input to the stage below that. Uh, and I can put a stop uh, any one of these stages because I, maybe I want to do inspect something. Or maybe I want to send an SNS message that, uh, to the ticketing uh, uh, ticket system that I may have, uh, do SNS messages in there. Um, so, So if I just take the code deploy part and look at it, so uh, you, you use the code deploy service and, and you can plug in that service to do the deployment for you, the, the provider. So you can take one instance or, and test it and do that and then do the rest of the instances. You can use um, GitHub as the source. You can use Jenkins uh, as the build server. Uh, and you can have MS build uh, plugin for the Jenkins, so the Jenkins can use the MS Build plugin, uh, and then, or you can use the 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 Elastic Beanstalk uh, to deliver uh, to deploy uh, to the target or to AWS. So here here is an example with Jenkins. Uh, so yes, the source code could be in, uh, it could be in GitHub, or it could be in source uh, what you call uh, S3, and from S3, it will pull that thing, given the permissions and, 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 and roles that, that, that you need to provide. Uh, and then the Jenkins will, will pull for new uh, artifacts that are coming in. And then once it acknowledges the success, and then it will do, pull the artifacts from there and do the build and the result, uh, the success and the result, it will put it into the next stage. And then this is ready to deploy. Uh, the, the final deploy part where it is ready to deploy. I could use Elastic Beanstalk here, or I could have used the code deploy to deploy. Um, retrieve the artifact, and then deploy uh, to the whole thing. 
Here, here is a way for you to extend, you know. So as I was talking to you, your ticketing system or your uh, can be attached to your notification that this has been done or this has been completed or that there has been a failure. Uh, or you can have uh, a security scan that you can be putting as the code, as, as the system is coming through, uh, through the pipeline, uh, as an orchestrating through the pipeline. Um, tools that, that, that you can leverage in your pipeline, in your CI CD pipeline, um, S3 code commit, we already said part of, as part of your source uh, repository. Uh, and then your lambda function, if you're familiar with lambda, uh, is, a, is, a, is a code that can run uh, without, without you having to provision uh, uh, resources for it. So it's a serverless execution or, or compute environment that we provide for you. So you write your code and you can so. So in this case, you can hook lambda to, to react to some of the uh, stages and, and work. On the deploy part, you have the code deploy, Cloud formation and Beanstalk and OpsWorks. So let's go back to, and these are some of the partners' uh, tools that are familiar, uh, that 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 uh, that are available that you can use. Um, if you are if you are working with any of these tools on premises, um, you you are, you can very easily use these, plug this into the pipeline that I was showing. Um, so let's 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 look at the uh, let's look at the. Um, Gem that that I was that I sent out to Bill, so it's still doing it. So I'm going to do some refresh here. Well, one is done. So let me look at the the other the the other tool that I wanted to, the other um, the code uh, example with code pipeline. So let me let me go here, and and. Let me, So I have a pipeline defined. Um, in just two stages. Uh, the first stage will bring your S3 uh, files. Uh, if there is a change or detection of if you version your the source control, it will detect that there is a change and will pull that in, and then it will doing and it will do some deployment. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what I will do is I will. Uh, I already put some code in there, and I, uh, and I can do a release change. Uh, and so you will see in a, few, in a minute that it, it will detect and start the pipeline uh, that I'm requesting. Or I could go back and put some code change, and this is like I'm manually um, forcing it to, to run. And here, there is a, there is a, for the pipeline for execution, there is this, there's a file called app spec. Let me bring that up so that you can have a quick look. So uh, let me, let me, so this is, this is the definition of what, what the pipeline will do, what, what, so where is the source, or it will, from the source, it will take the index.html and, and put it into uh, inet pub uh, www root. Uh, but if you look at the hooks, uh, one of the thing is before install, uh, there is a script that you will run. Let's see what's in that script. So the, in the script, I have actually put two PowerShell uh, uh, execute, execute, uh, com commands that I can use. One is the import module, uh, server manager, and the, uh, and the install Windows feature web server. Look at it, 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 will, it will run any, every time. But if it is already installed, it is the desired state configuration. So this module it will, is checking for, if it is installed, it will install it, it, it will not install, and uh, if it is already there, uh, or if it is not there, then it will put it in that desired configuration stage. So let's see if this process has started, so we can look at it. So this has, so you can see the next, the, 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 the other one, uh, it has finished the pulling the file from the uh, source because there was a change, and then it's, it's, built, it's doing the deployment on the target instances that I have set. So let's, let me go back to my first one, uh, uh, OpsWork example that I was showing.
and, and see if all the instances have uh, sometimes it's not the refresh that will do, but okay. Well, well, we'll wait for a minute and then we'll look at the, um, uh, the other piece. So let me, let me go back to my slide uh, very quickly. Uh, so uh, we already talked about cloud formation. So it can be a, you define the, the whole infrastructure as a, as a JSON or an XML, uh, put all the dependencies together and, and you can ha run it as modules. Uh, so you can have a cloud formation stack for your VPC and networking, and you can have a cloud formation stack for your application deployment. You can have a, a application specific infrastructures, and, and you can run uh, in parallel or, or in sequence, <coughs> or, or can wait for an action uh, that needs to be done. And allows the reusable um, component design strategies, and also, uh, so you have application and your infrastructure, and you have a source code control on them. So you can maybe have done this on staging, you can do repeat the same thing in your production. So you guarantee that uh, without any human involvement, you have used the same, uh, guarantee the two environments are exactly the same. Um, um, but this, in addition to that, for Windows, specifically for Windows, uh, one of the thing is that Windows require a booting, a reboot uh, at certain points. You know, uh, if you install something or activate some of the service, it requires booting. How do you handle that? What kind of support or help do we provide? I'll come get to that. And all of these, you can, um, are you familiar with our user data uh, concept in our virtual or instances on EC2? So in that user data, you can provide uh, the PowerShell script. Instead of embedding the uh, script there, you can provide a PowerShell script that you could store in, in, in S3 or someplace and be able to execute. And I'll show you some of the things that we provide, the complex for PowerShell script that we provide can handle, how it can handle in conjunction with uh, CloudFormation uh, to, to, to deploy those. So let's have a look. Um, these are some of the tools that, that, partner tools that you can use, the Chef, the Puppet, the Ansible and PowerShell DSC, the desired, uh, uh, the desired uh, state uh, configuration that you want. As I said, you can, it will check for it for you. And so these are some of the shell uh, PowerShells that we provide. So for example, AD service account that you need to create or, or create a auto logon, or disable an auto logon or enable an auto logon or if you want to invoke a domain join, all of these scripts and many more are available uh, when you install any of our uh, the toolkit or some of the uh, the quick start uh, that we that we provide. So, and and how you can combine these in your cloud formation uh, template. So here in a cloud formation template, you you are providing instead of hard coding uh, the region and um, the region and, and the location of your the PowerScript uh, PowerShell script, you are providing a choice of where the region is, you can, you can have the user select that and user, and then the, the, the folder and the directory, and then pick the file. And, and here that I'm saying, so now I can, um, basically, if you're familiar with uh, CloudFormation, so these are some of the constructs in CloudFormation that allows you a list to be shown and a drop list that you can pick, you know, the, find in map, and you collect the, select the region, same thing, select the, uh, uh, the bucket name, and all of that. Um, uh, here is what I'm saying, you can modularize a CloudFormation template uh, and, and reuse it for, for multiple larger uh, uh, template, for larger infrastructure that you may do. And we also provide a, a for most of our services, we have our cloud template, uh, uh, cloud formation templates that are available, and you can combine them to build your overall uh, infrastructure. Um, so here are two of them uh, that basically, and and I'm going to show you the so invoking a PowerShell script. So and also we uh, you can use your try catch blocks which you're familiar with with your Windows environment, 
and do some exception handling and all that stuff. While within your CloudFormation template, you, you are executing some of these scripts that are using the catch uh, try blocks in it. Uh, invoking a PowerShell script is pretty simple. Um, you, you use a command, commands, resource, commands as a resource in, in CloudFormation. Uh, you put the command and you give the script and you can say wait for completion zero. That means you, after it is completed, then only you, this is like this script is creating a Windows cluster, a failover cluster, uh, a, a, a task that would be very, very difficult if you were to uh, spend time and write your own scripts or build your own cell to try to do that. Uh, same thing, um, renaming a Windows requires a boot, reboot. So look at it, how uh, the command for renaming it, and, and it is waiting forever. Uh, before uh, the reboot completes, then it can go to the next step. And, uh, and in a combination, you can say wait forever, and then you can see uh, the signal for success. Once that is successful, uh, then you do the next step. So this is a combination uh, that you can use within your CloudFormation template uh, for an action. Uh, in, in general, it will run uh, in parallel all of the you know, commands, all the commands that you have asked for. Uh, but you can make it wait because you know that uh, there would be a, a restart would require a reboot. So you will you will can wait for a wait signal and it will start from that point down. Okay, so let's let's have a look at so let's look at the. the um, okay, so let me let me look at the pipeline. Um, so this should have completed it. So, so and you can see that uh, this process has been successful. Um, and I can now uh, go into one of these instances and be able to run uh, uh, the And here is uh, the node that, that I just deployed to. Uh, and I can just take the, the simple HTML file that I will be looking at. And Bear with me. I... Okay, so, uh, and uh, if I go back now, and, I, in, and in my source control, or S3, I update that file and put it back there, and, and the pipeline will automatically start and, and update. Yeah. So what I'm saying, in, in my case, I'm just putting a single file, but you can build the whole uh, application uh, and, and the app spec uh, uh, file that I was talk, showing to you, then where you can say for this, I'll put my resources here uh, into different directories or different folders. And I can show you an example of an app spec that, that would look uh, how it will look. Uh, I don't think we'll have a time to show you the other demo, but I, what I wanted to show you the aspect file so at least you can see uh, how this could be. So in this case, I have a bunch of files. So I will probably zip them up, uh, and it says where the source is in that, in, in, in that in, in the whole application, and where in my target 
uh, instance that I have created to put them in. And then look at the bottom. Uh, it says uh, uh, delete website uh, dot bat and install website uh, dot bat. And let's see what's in there. So I have the delete website as the before install uh, uh, phase. So basically it's saying if, if it does not exist, uh, then you delete that, uh, the, it's calling on the command, the delete website.ps1. Basically removing uh, that application and, and then in the uh, after install is putting that, uh, uh, putting that application there. So sorry, I should not have removed it. OK, any questions? All right, so this is where um, uh, you, you, you put a, a YAML or, or, or a app spec file definition, and you put it in the source code, and it will detect the change and will flow through uh, the system. Questions or? So the AWS quick starts are really good. I really like going through them. Um, but it would really help if you could. Um, so, um, hi. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, hmm. It would really help if you could fix the Windows CDI quick start. Hmm. Um, I published a solution for fixing the Jenkins server that gets deployed on AWS forums. Uh, nobody from AWS or the public has responded to that. There's other aspects. Sure. We can work the, with you. Yeah. I've looked at the CloudFormation templates. There's hmm. some bugs. Um, hmm. Anyways, it's a real good quick start, but I don't have time to fix the whole thing. All right. We'll work with you. <laughs> I'll give you my business card. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I will hook you up with the Quick Start team. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.